Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday, September 19, 2018 special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. May we all please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the town clerk please conduct the roll call? Chairman Sullivan? Here. Councilor Garvin? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Here. Councilor Randall? Here. And Councilor Straw? Here. Thank you. We now have an opportunity for citizens to address the council on items that are not on this evening's agenda. Would anyone like to address the council on an item or an issue that is not on tonight's agenda? Okay, seeing that no one is coming forward, we'll move on. Item number 129, review, review of proposed settlement agreement relating to Paper Street sections of Surfside Avenue. Before we continue, I'd like to make a few statements. I want to remind everybody of the decorum rules of the town, the town council. There shall be no approval or disapproval expressed in any way uh, after anyone's statement. Um, this is, uh, will be a very interesting evening, and motions may run high, but civil discourse is the order of the evening. I would ask everyone to remember that, and also counselors as well, to be respectful to each other. We may have some very differing views, but I want everyone to remember that, again, civil discourse is the order of the day. Um, I also want to remind the public that we will be voting only to accept or reject this proposed settlement. There won't be any other vote related to this issue this evening. Just whether we accept or reject the settlement proposal on this item. So moving on, we have our standard opportunity for public comment on this item. It is limited to 15 minutes. Uh, you have three minutes apiece, so if anyone would like to address the council, please come forward. My name is Deborah Murphy. I live at 24 Pilot Point Road. I'm going to talk this evening about a statement that was made during the um, public hearing on September 10th. Chris Straw asked Attorney Derwood Parkinson if there's settled law on vacating a portion of a paper street. And the answer was no, there is no case law. Jamie had previously given an example that Thompson Road, one end of it, was um, a portion was given up, and he thought possibly others, and I looked it up, and Avon Road in our neighborhood has been. So you have two precedents, right? And the response when, when Jamie gave that example was, oh good, we have an example. That didn't sit well with me. I'm sitting, not because it wasn't right, it was. But I'm thinking, wait a minute. You have a green belt trail that has a backbone of paper streets with pedestrian access on it. In fact, you accepted 19 Paper Street, 17 of which were accepted with a use of pedestrian access, two of which have just pedestrian access. You have 32 streets that are extended that are potential for pedestrian access. Isn't that more of a precedent than two that you've done just a portion to support this settlement agreement? Isn't that worth protecting? And again, those portions were half of or a portion of it consistent. These are non-consistent. You have vacated, not vacated. Vacated, there are gaps. You also, I had called Matt and I informed him that you have a situation along that, the upper portion where a lot has a perpetual easement for drainage that's owned by the town. It's storm drainage overflow. You have, there's ledge down there, so beyond that lot, you have to have flowage rights, so you can't vacate that. And I'm more than happy to provide that perpetual easement to you. I mentioned it over a month ago and again last week. So um, I think that's really important to note that you have something very important to protect. We have 3.7 miles of paper streets according to the paper street report. Um, and the green belts are, were created in paper streets, many 
to provide access from a neighborhood to publicly ex accessible open space. And as a reminder, if a developer submitted a subdivision plan today, isn't a certain percentage reserved for what? Public use. The rights on a paper street are public use rights. The town is the agent, the steward, to protect those rights. They belong to the public. The public has an equal right to the plaintiffs. They have no more right than a Shore Acres lot owner, the plaintiffs. The public has an equal right. Please protect the public right. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Anita Pettit. I live at 8 Katahdin Road. I have four brief points to make tonight. First, in the last few days, I've talked to over 100 Cape citizens in seeking signatures for our new petition. Not a single one mentioned potential litigation costs to support public access to the Surfside Avenue Paper Street, nor did anyone offer an amount that they considered acceptable for giving up public access. A few considered the $500,000 mentioned in the agreement insulting. Most expressed frustration, frustration and anger that their wishes expressed over several years were being ignored by the town council. I think you're mistaken if you believe that accepting the proposed settlement agreement will settle this thorny issue. Based on my observations, it's more likely to add fuel to the fire. Second, I noticed that the accompanying documents for tonight's meeting include the latest Greenbelt plan. No one is talking about including Surfside Avenue on the Greenbelt Trail system at this point, and there's ample precedent for the town, for the Conservation Committee's maintenance of paper streets and other non-Greenbelt public ways. I'm wondering why this avenue hasn't been pursued more vigorously in seeking solutions to this issue. Thirdly, I would express my hope that the Town Council will consider relative property values in discussing the value of the property in question. Historical data on previous purchases of inland properties is not sufficient. A wooded lot half a mile from the coast is probably worth one-tenth of the value of a comparable area of oceanfront land. For us, this property is priceless. But if a dollar amount must be considered, it should at least be a realistic one. Finally, I believe strongly that the future generations would consider us very foolish for giving up access to an irreplaceable piece of land that they will never be able to walk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jim Corey, 27 Trendy Road. Uh, in deciding whether or not to accept this settlement, I would ask that you remember the people um, you were elected to represent. The five plaintiffs, only two of whom actually reside on their properties year-round, bought their properties knowing that they boarded a paper street, with the possible exception of one uh, lot owner or homeowner who, um, based on some misunderstanding that, in fact, this was not a paper street, bordering his house, received $200,000 off the agreed upon sale price as a result. Uh, now the plaintiff, that particular plaintiff, is offering $100,000 back to the town to get back to where he thought he was in the first place, and it seems that that individual will um, basically make a profit of $100,000 if the $500,000 you are talking about is evenly divided amongst the five plaintiffs. Please think about the message you're sending to this town if you accept this settlement. Number one, you are saying to all of us that people with deep pockets and the willingness to threaten the town with costly lawsuits get what they want. And number two, the town does not have the, or the town council specifically, does not have the courage to stand up to such blackmail. Every chance they have been given, the citizens of this town have spoken clearly, loudly, consistently, and overwhelmingly that they do not want you to accept or to vacate this paper street. I was disappointed to hear one councillor cavalierly dismiss the 1,400 people who signed a petition expressing the support for accepting the paper street known as Surfside, and then later ridiculing the idea that we send this issue out to a public vote because, of course, we know how the town would vote. This agreement is essentially what some councillors tried to uh, sneak past the community last year. 
Um, it comes, however, this time with an extra added attraction of a $500,000 signing bonus. Please do not disappoint this town by accepting this agreement. Please say no. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. I'm Paul Mosen, 22 Trundy Road, here in Cape. I'm going to be brief. Do not accept this ridiculous offer. If you do, you're opening up Pandora's box. Everyone who abuts all those paper roads, or the other paper roads, along the ocean are going to come forward and want the same and maybe even for less. And you're going to have to deal with that legally. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Roy Herman, 2 Avon Road in Shore Acres. Um, last week I emailed a letter to the town council expressing my concerns concerning this. After I had sent it off, I started to think a little bit more deeply and I recalled about two years ago, there, was a, there were meetings about a deck that was built illegally, though with some extenuating <laughs> circumstances. Uh, that got people's dander up. And I think in the end, there was a compromise. And the deck was permitted to remain, though with some uh, adjustments. Um, but my thinking is, is that maybe Giving, giving in on that, we set a dangerous precedent and that by reversing the paper street, we're, we also again risk setting another dangerous precedent which will have um, a domino effect all around the town. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Mike Thorne. I live at 15 Highview Road. $500,000 is an amazing amount of money. For that much money, the town could buy my camp on Keyser Pond with 200 feet of frontage, two hours from Cape, or maybe a similar piece of land on Little Sebago Lake. But in Cape Elizabeth, a foot of shorefront costs about $10,000. I've spent the last couple of weeks poring over the database of the state of Maine's um, online assessing um, applications, and I've gone through different real estate um, websites that aggregate information and show property values and market values and properties for sale. And so, based on 800 linear feet of open ocean, the cost of acquiring that would be between four and eight million dollars. So $500,000 is a piddling amount. Now you could say, well, linear feet is different from all the rights to a piece of property. Or you could say, well, it's only the shorefront. But think about that man that painted in Scarborough Think about that crumbly shoreline that um, people pay five to ten million dollars a painting for. I'm talking about Winslow Homer, and for some magical reason, crashing surf on these crumbling rocks on open ocean is magical. And that's our little bit of it, and we need to hold on to it. Thank you. Thank you. George Foley, 9 Pilot Point Road. We moved here in 1964. We've used that property ever since. It's, we were welcomed by the original abutters until these people from away moved in. And then it was, oh my God, you're walking in our front yard. Well, no, it's not their front yard. If you guys live on the street, and I assume most of you do, it would be like you saying suddenly, well, I don't want people on the street. It's in front of my house. The same is true here. This was a dedicated property in the subdivision for the town to eventually accept. Whether they built a road on it or a trail on it, the people buying those properties knew 
that their land only went to the edge of that road. Now, I don't understand why we're still here doing this. This is foolishness. It's, it's a waste of time and money. We should accept the road, put a trail on it, put a road on it, whatever we're going to do. It should not be given away to a butters when that, it's a lifetime, okay? We were here for Fort Williams. They were going to develop that into properties, put houses on it. Can you imagine what this town would have been without having that beautiful park there? Yes, it has access to the lighthouse. This property has access to viewing two lights. It shines on that property every day. How will this town council be remembered? The town council from back then did a great job accepting Fort Williams. Is this town council going to sell out for $500,000 for irreplaceable, totally priceless property? I hope not. I hope that you do stand up to these people. We already won the case for you. If you look at the case where they forced us into court, the judge said the town had the right to accept this property. Do it. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Sue Garrett to Katahdin Road, Cape Elizabeth. Thank you again, town councilors, for all you've done throughout these past five years. Um, as you know, I'm a 56-year resident of Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and probably my biggest honor is that without my father, who sat in your place, and also had a chance to make a quick buck for the town, selling Fort Williams to the university systems, we would not have this glorious property called Fort Williams. It is an honor to say that my dad, Jim Murray, had a foresight to make such a bold decision, listened to our residents, and voted not to sell Fort Williams. You've heard me tell that story many times. You've also heard me say why you didn't ask those 1,400 people for the $357 for that 500,000 if that's what you really want. I've sent a letter to all of you this evening and I hope you've had the opportunity to read it. I won't read it here tonight, but I want to also give you my last parting words. What an honor it has been to stand with the residents as it is honor to be Jim Murray's daughter. This money, this offer, has only arisen from the hard-fought efforts of the citizens. It is not a windfall or a lottery for the town to take and put in their pocket pockets. It has been the sweat equity. It has been the campaigning. It has been the education. It has been the legal research. It has been the endless efforts of the Cape Elizabeth residents, those that support the Shore Acres rights, SOS, and the Shore Acres Association. To all of those committee members, thank you. It's an honor to stand with you for what is right. Please accept the paper streets and do not accept the mediation settlement. Thank you. Uh, before we continue with public comment, I need to tell the council we have just exceeded our 15 minutes. So what, what would need to happen if we hear any other members of the public, the council would need to vote to extend that 15 minute period. Um, what is uh, what are councilors thinking? I just like to get a feel for how many other people want to speak. Okay. Is that all right with everyone? All right. If there's anyone else that's interested in, interested in speaking tonight, please line up and then we will make a decision. Because I mean, I don't think it should be another public hearing. I, no, I agree. Well, we could do another. We'll, we will we could do another 15. All right. Is that what a council think? Okay. One more 15-minute uh, public comment period, and that that will be final. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just get the time. Okay. Seven. Okay. Hi. Thank you. I'm Lisa Larabee. I live on 15 Gladys Road. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, this is kind of. Uh, last minute decision, but I wanted to just say two things. I moved here from upstate New York almost nine years ago. One of the reasons we picked this town is because it's such a beautiful town and um, the access to the trails and the ocean was just such a treat to people who weren't used to living in an area where there's that beautiful access for the public. Um, so I treasure that about this town. And secondly, I live on a quiet little side street 
and I have a paper street on the side of my house. And I was a little bit nervous about it because they decided to update some trails in the back. And I can honestly say, as a person who has one next to me and I didn't have the deep pockets or even the thought to, to go that route to ask the, the town to give up the paper street, but I'm glad that it exists and I'm glad that I have the trail behind me because it's a wonderful public opportunity to be in the woods. It's a little bit different. It, it, it's not, you know, an ocean front, but it's not a problem for me as a property owner having it. And it does go right between my property and my neighbors. And people are so respectful in this town. And it's just, it's nice to see people using it. It's not abused. And I, as a person who has that, wish that people could see that this is a wonderful town with people who just want the opportunities to enjoy nature. And that if they gave that chance to their neighbors, and maybe to the town if a trail was developed, that it would be a win-win for everybody. So I'm asking you to not accept their deal and to make the Paper Street a permanent thing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name's Tim Thompson. I live at Six Pine Ridge Road. I've been before you on a number of occasions to speak on this subject. First of all, I want to thank you all for all that you do. I think you've, as a town council, over years and years and years, you showed remarkable restraint and patience with this topic. I'm not sure that that's necessarily treated the council or the town very well. Uh, when we've had the opportunity to accept these streets in the past, uh, we've, we've pushed it off. We've, we've taken it to the conservation committee. Um, they came back with a recommendation uh, that didn't get too much traction. Uh, we've, we've been well, we've had, we've paid for uh, uh, people to come in and help us come to agreement. Uh, we've, uh, we've set up those kind of a meetings and uh, to no avail. I think you've shown a lot of patience in trying to come to a good resolution on this. It's unfortunate neighbors against neighbors, townspeople against townspeople, uh, tax on, on both sides it sounds like, and that's really unfortunate in a town our size. It's got so much going for it. Uh, the, bo the point I bo I'd like to make tonight is one, um, I'm the chairperson of the Comprehensive Plan Committee, and I'm, I want to make sure I'm clear that I'm not here representing the Comprehensive Plan Committee. We've got two members on the town council that are, are terrific members of that committee with me. But in my duties, or in, in the work that we've done on that Comprehensive Plan Committee, it's been uh, pretty clear to me, but either the 2007 plan that you operate on now as a guide, or the one that we're, we're finishing chapters on, and hopefully I'll have it ready for you at the first of next year. And neither the one you're working with now as a guide, or the one that we're, we've completed the chapters on, when you talk about open space, and access to the ocean, and uh, any of the topics around whether or not this would seem like a good idea to uh, sell off a piece of property, uh, when we've been, as every opportunity with, with either what you've done or SELT's done, we've been finding these kinds of, kinds of property and keeping them open for the town. The survey that we just did with these townspeople, they, they, some of the top reasons they love our town is its open space, its access to the ocean, the scenic beauty that we have, uh, the, the trails that we can walk. Uh, Either, so I guess that's the point I'd like to make is use that as a guide. Use the one that you're working with now and the one we're working on. Uh, uh, it'll give you a clear, clear vision of where the best uh, way, direction to take. And I think it would be to work with the, try to work with the people to, to make them comfortable that if you do accept these streets, their rights would be protected. Uh, try to bring this town back together uh, so that we can continue to enjoy. There's only 9,000 of us in this town. Uh, and uh, many of the people on, on both sides Mr. are my Thompson, friends. your time is up. If you could wrap up your comments. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Dina Mayo Bruns. I live on Two Lights Road. I am not a Trinity Point or any of um, people that are near the paper streets in question here this evening. But I feel compelled to first thank you all. I know this has been a very long and you are very involved in many other aspects and very timely things that you could otherwise be doing, perhaps. 
um, something you prefer than some of what has been going on with this issue. The point of my speaking this evening, though, <laughs> is to ask you to please think, and I know you probably have considering for quite a while, but the reason I am here and really <coughs> speaking to you is my family has, goes back in this town three generations. And I know compared to a few, that's probably not that long, but compared to many. And what I'm trying to get at is the issue that my grandparents and others back in the late 60s, excuse me, the early 60s, actually late 50s, and others coming forward, and certainly a lot before and a lot since, have put so much of their personal time, energy, and dedication into the protection of rights to the sea, be it to walk near it, to be able to actually dangle your feet in it. And the reason I mention this, especially when it comes to Two Lights Road, I grew up on the shores, as many of us did here, of Two Lights State Park because people before us, before me and anybody else, I think, that's sitting here, ever even imagined that there could be, should be a public park there. People saw the potential, and they also understood that, that was very valuable land, and people bought up, if you do your history, so that it could be eventually consolidated and eventually accepted, so that today, one very important part of this town has been preserved, not for those people alone, but for all generations to come. And I think that is one of the most important things about what you are charged with here as stewards of the public interest. Please do not give away one little bit of public access walkway or in any of that near the ocean that we might have rights to today. It's the future that is at stake here. And I felt compelled to please ask you to accept the paper streets for that reason. It's not us. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Bryant, and I live at 55 Sperling Avenue in Cape Elizabeth. Um, and I have represented the Shore Acres Improvement Association, as you've heard me speak to you before. Uh, I think I just reiterate <clears throat> SAIA's initial position on this, which is that the best solution to this problem for the long term for the uh, residents of the Shore Acres neighborhood who hold private rights is for the town to accept these uh, paper streets because that not only solves protecting their issues, it also has the benefit of protecting public rights. Um, I think if you look back at the history of the town, you'll see a number of examples in which your predecessors of town council have acted in the best interest of the town with a really long-sighted view, looking ahead to what's going to happen 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, how this town is going to change. You look at Fort Williams, that was decided by one vote, that the town should accept that as a, uh, as a public amenity. You look at the Shore Road Path, you look at the Green Belt, places like Robinson Woods, those are the things that define what this town is about and why people find this town such an attractive place to be. So I would urge you uh, to not only review all those wonderful documents and emails and letters that have come into you, but look at the public uh, support through the petitions that have been presented to this uh, council before and do what's best for the town in the long term, which I believe is to accept the public, the paper streets uh, as town assets. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is John Voltz. I live at 33 Phillip Road. Earlier this evening, I sent a, a letter to the town council. I'm going to read primarily from that. Um, although I will uh, first add that this, my letter really addresses the matter before you tonight, which is um, to accept or not accept the current settlement agreement. And it does not really delve into matters of principle, which and other things as people have spoken to. I think those need to come subsequent to these comments. So, dear town councilors, tonight again we face uh, revisit the issue of Surfside Avenue, Paper Streets, Coastal Access, and more to the point, the proposed settlement um, that is before us now. As we have seen, this is an issue where emotions have run high. I do not envy your position, and I appreciate your service to the town, especially in difficult issues such as this. As you approach tonight, I want to offer some more detailed comments uh, to follow up my previous public comments, uh, hopefully make help guide you this evening. Timing. 
Well, this has been, issue has been discussed for some time. It currently seems that the town council is in a rush to its decision. Part of the urgency seems to be linked to the Superior Court's timeline. It's my understanding that should the town choose not to settle right now, it's still quite possible that you could settle at a later date. Cases frequently settle on the courthouse steps. If there's an explicit cost to waiting, this too should be made explicit to the public. So it may be evaluated. For several reasons I'll outline, I think more time is needed to navigate the current issues that may lead to a better result for the town and its residents. Process and information. As I expressed in my public comment last meeting, it does not seem possible for anyone to evaluate the current, the public to evaluate the current proposed settlement agreement. Only one side of the deal has been presented with clarity. Well, Jamie Garvin pointed out at the last public meeting that there's a great deal of public information available. The availability does not solve this problem. Many members of the public have looked in great detail at the available data. Not surprisingly, each person seemed to reach a different and contradictory conclusion. I feel that there is currently widespread difference of opinion on the relevant public facts. This is divisive and undermines confidence in your current process. As a citizen, I look to the council to provide some consensus around critical data. I look to the council to present a set of publicly available data that it considers relevant and reliable and that they considered in reaching their decision. This has not happened. It was surprising to me at the last town council meeting that there appeared to be no consensus as to the value of the underlying property or to the range of values of the incipient rights which we are discussing. This sort of, if this sort of information were available for the public to see and evaluate, it might be possible to build a more sensible consensus around the thoughtfulness and thoroughness of the council's deliberation on this highly charged issue. Mr. Pulse, your time is up. Please, please uh, finish. Whichever way this decision goes. Proceeding with the settlement doesn't offer that. So I hope that whatever you decide, slow down, get the data, let people see it, and I hope that you make a wise decision. Thank you. Public comment period is closed. Before we as counselors begin our, our deliberations, I do want to uh, uh, ask our attorney, Derwood Parkinson, to just explain a document. This is uh, an a 1956 aerial photograph. It is in the supporting documents, and there are links to it. Um, so, so the public is aware of this. Um, it has been shown to the council. Good evening, uh, Derwood Parkinson. Uh, Part of the court process is what they call a request for productions of documents, and both sides have sent uh, those requests to one another, and the town's uh, production was extensive, for over 10,000 documents, Ben, 14,000? Yeah, so incredibly extensive. Um, Matt uh, um, was in charge of that effort, and all the department heads um, contributed to various documents that were uh, gathered together and produced the other side. One of those documents is this aerial photograph, which I think is dated 1956. And um, now we can leave it here, or whatever, whatever is, uh, the chair recommends. Uh, but this is a, 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 an aerial photograph that was made, we believe, um, and as part of the assessor's records, as a part of making tax uh, map uh, records in the area. And um, it could be read, and, um, and we're analyzing all this to show um, Surfside Avenue um, and, and, and uh, some walking trails. Uh, but everybody, it's, it's sort of uh, uh, a matter of interpretation, and some may interpret it differently, but um, Madam Chairman, you asked me to make sure that this was part of your record, and it is, and it's something that we think is uh, an important record uh, to be preserved and perhaps presented at a later date. Yep. So should I just hand that to Leave it back with the town manager. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair, yeah. uh, is it possible to clip it up on the, if, if it's too much of a hassle, so be it, but otherwise could we just clip it up there clip so up. the public can see it? Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
So moving along, uh, we are now at item 129. We've completed our public comment process for the uh, benefit of the audience at home. I'm going to read the, uh, what is in front of us uh, on the agenda, which explains the history, the very brief history since the August 13 Town Council meeting. On August 13, 2018, the Town Council voted to send the proposed settlement agreement between the Town of Cape Elizabeth and Imad Khalidi, David Leopold, Kara Leopold, Andrew Sommer, Susan Ross, Stuart Wooden, Julie Wooden, and Pilot Point LLC regarding Paper Street sections of Surfside Avenue to a public hearing on September 10, 2018 to begin the deemed vacation process of a Paper Street section of Surfside Avenue. Following the public hearing, the council voted to schedule an executive session at the workshop on Monday, September 17, 2018 at 6 p.m. with attorney Derwood Parkinson to discuss the legal rights and duties of the town council relating to paper streets and the proposed settlement agreement and a special meeting on Wednesday, September 19, 2018 at 7 p.m. on the proposed settlement agreement. So as I mentioned earlier, we are, are, we are only voting either to accept or reject the settlement agreement tonight. There won't be any other action tonight. So, um, and we haven't, as a counselor uh, question, we haven't written out any specific motion because my understanding is it's going to be a simple, uh, after we deliberate, a motion would be either to accept or reject made by a counselor. So if the town manager could confirm that. Yeah, that that's correct, Madam Chairman, thank you. Okay. Councilor Straw? So I think I understand what you just said. <laughs> um, so, but, so we still have to make a motion though. It isn't uh, yes or no. Uh, well, you, you, would make, you would make a motion, uh, whatever motion you would prefer to make, whether to accept the settlement agreement or to reject the settlement agreement. Uh, so I'll start then. Uh, I move that the town council reject the proposed settlement agreement between the town of Cape Elizabeth and Ahmad Khalidi, David Leopold, Cara Leopold, Andrew Summer, Susan Ross, Stuart Wooden, Julie Wooden and Pilot Point LLC regarding Paper Street sections of Surfside Avenue. I second that. There's a second. Okay, and now discussion, please. Councillor Randall. Um, I just would like, before we begin this discussion, because I know I've heard a lot of concerns from citizens about um, conflict of interest or the appearance of conflict of interest, and I'm not making any suggestions or accusations, but pursuant to our code of ethics, sections three and five, I think it may be wise for us each to just disclose any connections that we each might have to the plaintiffs or any, any potential conflicts of interest we might have or any appearances of conflicts of interest. Um, I'm happy to begin. Okay. I bought a house in Cape Elizabeth a year ago. I lived here for about six months before that. I know no in that neighborhood. So, Caitlin Jordan. I know almost all of the plaintiffs and some of them visit our farm stand. Do you feel this rises to a level of conflict of interest for you? 
I do not. They don't support the farm stand that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. My humor. Thank you. Although I, I'd like, it's nice to have levity. However, this is this is, I'm a, sorry. I'm this sorry. is a very serious proceeding. Councilor Jamie Garvin. Um, I know uh, through casual conversation on this issue, uh, all of the particular plaintiffs. Um, I, of all of them, know David and Carol Leopold the, the closest, simply because our children are in the same grades. Um, I consider them casual friends or acquaintances, as I do many people in town. I've never stepped foot in their house before, um, so I use that as a measure of how good a friend I am with them. Um, so I've also spoken with uh, many, many residents uh, in the Shore Acres neighborhood that are not plaintiffs in the lawsuit, uh, as I've collected information about all, all sides of this issue. So. So, I don't feel that any of those discussions or uh, uh, casual relationships prevent me from uh, rendering an unbiased opinion on this. Well, thank you. Uh, I do not know on any level at all any of the uh, plaintiffs in the, on the, in the lawsuit. I've certainly seen them when they've come before the council. Um, I do have casual friendships around town, including some in Shore Acres, but I don't feel anything rises to the level of conflict of interest. Councilor Penny Jordan? Um, I, I know probably all of them to some degree, mostly because uh, they either shop at my farm stand or whatever. Uh, I, I wouldn't consider that I have any conflict at all. It's just casual relationship, interaction. Thank you. And Councilor Sarah Lennon? Um, I would echo what everyone else is saying. I have acquaintances. I've spoken to many people in that neighborhood about this issue. I guess I have casual friendships with people on both sides, and I don't feel any of my relationships uh, present a problem. Thank you. And Councilor Straw? Uh, I point to uh, the disclosure I made last December that I'm sure you all remember. Um, uh, going down the actual named plaintiffs, um, I think uh, Mr. Khalidi introduced himself to me once in this room, but I don't recall having any other interactions with them ever. Uh, the Leopolds I know through school. I consider them uh, casual acquaintances, and I think Cara served on the Fort Williams, Park Commission, or Fort Williams Park Foundation with me contemporaneously for a short period of time. Uh, and I've had conversations with the both of them in passing, but um, uh, I've never been in their house either. Uh, the Summers, I couldn't pick out uh, Mr. Summer from a crowd. Uh, same with Miss Ross and the Woodens, I also couldn't pick out from a crowd. And I have no idea who the owners of the LLC are. Maybe that just shows you I haven't read the paper sufficiently. Um, otherwise, beyond that, I'm familiar with uh, and friends with uh, people on all sides of the issue down in uh, surfs uh, in the Shore Acres neighborhood. Um, as you'll recall, I voluntarily chose not to per uh, participate um, in any discussions while the Rinaldis were still living in their house. They have now sold their property and have moved away. Um, and um, otherwise, I could, if anyone wants me to iterate any of the other people that are down in the area that in my relationships, I'm more than happy to go into greater detail. But none of it rises to the level that I think in any way would cause me to put their interests before the towns. Great, thank you. Councilor Randall, are you satisfied? Yeah. Yes, and I'd like to briefly revise my statement. I, I've spoken to a number of um, residents in that neighborhood, listened to them, read their emails. Um, Mr. Wooden called, reached out to me at one point. I explained to him that I didn't wish to engage given that we are in litigation, but that's, that's the extent. Ah, uh, would any other counselor like to divulge any communication they've had, whether oral or written with any of the plaintiffs? within the last, I don't know, what month or so. Councilor Straw? Uh, I would just note that um, one of the plaintiffs did reach out to me after our last meeting, and I expressed to them that I am not comfortable having any communications with them outside of a public hearing. Thank you. Councilor Lennon? Um, can't think of any. I mean, over the course of these years, I have spoken, I think, to most of them at some point. Um, mm -hmm. Because they called me and asked me to listen to whatever they, opinion they wanted to have. Um, 
but not, I can't think recently that I've had a conversation with any of them. Okay, thank you. Councilor Penny Jordan. I would say similar to Sarah that over the years I've um, had conversations and interactions with uh, a couple of them. Um, when approached in the near term, it's, uh, I was not able to speak about the subject and that's... So in, in recently, right. is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I haven't had any, any communication with any, any of the plaintiffs. So, recently at all, so I would say that. Councilor Garvin? Um, I met with Marshall Goldman and David Leopold last week at their request. Uh, prior to doing that, I reached out to Matt Sturgis, who then reached out to Derwood Parkinson seeking advice on whether or not that would be uh, either allowable or advisable. Um, we all received the same information back that it was not prohibited in any way um, and that uh, I, I decided to meet with them as I would have with anybody who would ask. It had nothing to do with them being plaintiffs in the case. I would have met with, and I have talked and met with other people that are not plaintiffs in the case too. So, um, in my opinion, citizens wanted um, to uh, ask questions and bring forward their information to me, and I was happy to receive that information as I was with lots of people in this case. So, um, I don't, uh, I did, did not represent any opinion of my own to be that of the councils. Uh, frankly, just listen to what they had to say. Thank you, and finally, Councilor Caitlin Jordan. I've spoken to several of them over the course of this whole five-year plan and the recent months, I guess, since this, I've spoken to them as well as because they've come into the farm stand. But same as Jamie, I've listened and been there to be talked to. Wait, I forgot, Marshall Goldman called me. I, I completely forgot that a week or two ago, and I, it was a brief conversation. I listened, I told him I couldn't talk about it because it was under litigation. He understood, he was very polite and respectful, and it was brief. All right, completely thank you. Completely forgot that. Okay, thank you, Council Lena. Any, would anyone like to uh, disclose anything else? Okay, all right, thank you very much. Okay, we have a motion on the table and it is seconded, so I think uh, unless there are any other um, concerns or issues regarding our deliberations, that we can go ahead and begin. Um, Council Straw, I'll put you on the spot as you made the motion. Would you be ready to give us your position? Um, obviously, since I made the motion, um, I'm going to support the motion, but I'm gonna withhold comment um, until the end if I see fit to comment. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to preempt that in the sense that as, as a chairman prerogative, my plan is to withhold my comments until the very end. So you, you, as long as the rest of the council is okay with it, you can go right before me. <laughs> Councilor Penny Jordan. Um, I'm more than willing to share uh, my thoughts and uh, position at this point in time. I have to tell you that over the last several years, I, I feel like I've been buried in, in a lot of detail and have, uh, uh, you know, looked at documents, historical documents, et cetera, and, and, and I feel like have gained an understanding of what the issue has been. And what it always came back to for me is that how do we bring a neighborhood back together? Um, and so as I thought about um, over the last several weeks, what I think about is that I had three criteria that this agreement needed to meet, and I don't believe that this agreement meets all three of their criteria. And my number one criteria was that the Shore Road residents would be guaranteed access to the ocean. Um, the other was that the town would benefit and that the abutters would, uh, would get something. Um, I've, the public hearing that we had, I think, was one of the best public hearings I have ever, ever attended. And hearing um, the facts and the logic and the deep thinking, and it made me feel so blessed to be in this town that's filled with these bright, intelligent people who articulate positions so well. Um, 
As I, as I left the public hearing, I have to say that I still hadn't formed a full opinion of where to go with this agreement. But what I had to do is finally pull myself out of the minutia of data because that's not where uh, my best thinking is because it becomes a bit overwhelming. So I had to go to a principle-based system. Uh, and so I started thinking about all of the emails and everything that had been said at the um, public hearing. And I said, what were the principles? What were the principles that came to the top? And I will tell you that the principle that came to me was that as a representative of the citizens of this town, it is important to me to ensure access to the ocean for everybody. Not, and in, in the past it was about shore acres, but in listening to what everybody was saying, it became access for everybody. And so therefore, I, I could then have clarity about making a decision and really stating a position, because before that, it was all just about data. Um, and so if we think about what guided all of the people before us who sat here as a council person and what should guide us as we move forward, it should be principles. And that principle, I think, should guide the council from this point forward, and that is access to the ocean for all citizens. So that is why I would vote against the agreement. Okay, thank you. Councilor Randall. Okay. Um, I may be a little long-winded, and I apologize, but um, although I'm new to the town and I'm new to the council, relatively new at this point, I really got into this issue. Penny has a wonderful binder over here that perhaps you can see with a lot of materials on the Paper Streets issue going back for years, and I borrowed that for, from her and I kept it for a number of months until she begged for it back and I went through every page of it. I have read every single email that has come through my inbox. I have read the opinion pieces in the Cape Courier. I've read the opinion pieces in the Portland Press Herald. I've, I've really dug into this issue because I wanted to make sure that I was understanding it and also understanding what, it, what my role on the town council was with regard to this issue. So, well, I initially started out thinking that this proposed settlement was a great idea. Um, I have since reversed course, and I will not be voting to accept the settlement. Um, I initially thought $500,000, that's a wonderful gift to the town to have in our land acquisition fund. And I thought back to recently when CELT came to us and they asked for some money to purchase some more land and how unfortunate it was that we couldn't give them everything that they needed to purchase that land because I really value open spaces and I really value the public's access to those spaces and CELT is, is such a wonderful partner for the town to have in doing that. So I thought $500,000 would be such a great thing and next time CELT comes to us we'd be able to give it to them. So. I, I talked to my dad a lot about the, the principles behind this, and after one of our conversations, and my dad, I should say, is from Massachusetts. He's from a coastal community where, when he grew up, there was abundant access to the shoreline, and now, when you go to that town, you can't really get to the water. Um, and so after our conversation, um, my dad, who is a copy editor, so he's constantly reading the news, sent me an article from the New York Times and it was about uh, an access issue in um, Half Moon Bay in California. So I read the article and he, he titled the email, um, here's a good beach read, haha. <laughs> 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 so I read through the article and what it was about was a lawsuit in Half Moon Bay where there was a community um, where there was access to a beach and everybody in that um, development had deeded rights to access it and other individuals had implied rights, very similar to what, what we have here. So at one point, a man with a lot of money came in and he purchased all of the properties in that development. So he purchased all of the deeded rights. And then, when the people with implied rights tried to get access to that beach, he took them to court. And it's a battle that has been going on for years. So there were a couple things that struck me about it about the article, and one was a comment where he said, 
It's not like this is the East Coast where you can't access the water. This is California. And I thought, wow, we really, have we become that to the rest of the country where they think of us here on the East Coast where you can't get to the water and we have so much of it, especially in Maine. So I think sometimes it's important to just stand on principle and this is an issue that comes down to principle for me. Um, so I want to say a couple things. One thing I want to say is I've, I've heard a lot from people who are frustrated with our lawyers. Um, our lawyers are fantastic and I'm a lawyer so you know my clients often tell me are you even fighting for me? Do you even care about me? I think, I think what gets confusing is that when lawyers are giving you advice they're telling you what you can expect and they're telling you what the benefits are of a certain um, path that you could take. So in this situation they're letting us know what the potential benefits are in the settlement and one of those is is this certainty in terms of this lawsuit. So if we accept the settlement, it gives us some certainty. And I say that to my clients all the time, although they're in different situations, they're pleading guilty to crimes, but you know, it's the same idea. If you, if you choose this path, you'll know what you're going to get. If you choose the other path, you don't know. These are some of the arguments that we'll present. I think they're great arguments, but rarely do you know this is a case we're going to win. Um, so I, I would just urge, the, urge everyone to, to have patience and understand that they're not, that they are fighting for us. They will fight for us if we don't accept the settlement. They're just, they're telling us, you know, what it is. And if you want to accept a settlement, this is a pretty good settlement. I would say they did a great job. But what it came down to, and we, you know, I, I brought this up before, they give you the information and you have to put it through your own analysis and you have to bring your own values to the information and analyze it that way. And so for me, you know, as I've analyzed it and taking into account what I've heard from everybody, from many, many people, I guess not everybody, is that what they value is, is the principle and they value the access. And so those are two things that the settlement doesn't bring us. So if that's what you value, then the settlement is not a good deal. Um, let's see, I I'm, I'm mixed up my notes. So something else I'd like to clarify is that I think it would be bad precedent for us to accept the settlement. That doesn't mean legal precedent. I think there's been a lot of confusion about precedent versus legal precedent. When I say it would be bad precedent, I mean standing on principle and rejecting the settlement sets a precedent in that, in that way. Legally, if we were to accept the settlement, it's not going to set a precedent because it's a settlement. In a different way, it, it could set a, a bad precedent. So in terms of costs and value, there was someone who spoke at the last public meeting and I unfortunately didn't jot down his name and I can't remember it and he's probably God because I think he spoke in favor of accepting the settlement. But one thing he said was that this piece of land is not even good for fishing. It's good for nothing. You can't even fish off of it. There are plenty of other great places to fish, but not this piece of land. And I thought, isn't that amazing that so many people want to preserve this one piece of land for no reason other than its natural beauty and that you can stand on this land and you can look out at the water and you can enjoy it. And what could be worth more than that? You can't even fish off of it. It's just about the beauty. And I love that. I love that people are so willing to stand up for something like that in this world where we tend to get so dark and think that everything's about money and, and that we've forgotten all of these important things. Another thing that I, that I thought about is um, trying to monetize this. You know, I brought up at the last meeting that I'd, I'd like to know the value of the land and the value of you know, what it would cost to purchase that if, we, if it were an, an easement, for example. To me, this isn't about money. I think there were a lot of people who wanted to hear it in terms of money and to think of it in terms of dollar amounts, but, but there are some things that you just can't put into dollar amounts, and, and that's another reason why I don't think that the settlement is a good idea, because you, you can't put a price tag on principle. And if you can put a price tag on it, then it's not a principle. So I am standing on principle, and um, with Councillors Jordan and Straw, I will be voting 
um, against accepting the settlement. Thank you, Councilor Randall. Councilor Garvin. Um, I thought those were very good points you made, Valerie, um, and I appreciate your presentation. Um, I wanted to first just talk about a few things relative to this process um, and uh, hopefully correct some pieces of what I think are misinformation uh, prominently um, being communicated to us directly in email um, or through conversations. Um, the reason we're here today is because of a lawsuit that was brought against the town. There's been a lot of other debate and discussion, which many of us have been a part of in our tenure on the council and before, around paper streets and decisions to accept or extend or vacate and things like that. But the very reason that we're here today is specifically because of a lawsuit that was brought against the town. Um, I've brought this up before and I'll reiterate it tonight, that the, the actual process of the mediation to reach the settlement that we're considering tonight is a function of that lawsuit and that legal process. There are no counselors that are sitting here that were either party to the mediation or not that were looking to come up with any kind of shortcut in this process or uh, chose a date for any mediation <laughs> that was you know, less in the public eye because it took place in the summertime or anything like that. We were told to go to a mediation that was at the court scheduling, and that's what we did, and we showed up. Second of all, um, I've heard a lot of discussion about this being a predetermined and predecided uh, fait accompli, if you will. Well, clearly, from counting in the room, you can tell that that's not the case. Um, when I joined Councillor Lennon and Councillor Sullivan at the mediation, our principal purpose there was to, number one, listen, to hear what was, was, you know, what advice we were getting. And number two, if there was a negotiation to be had, to try and come away from that with what we, in our estimation, was the best deal that we could get that day. Um, bring that back to the council and have us deliberate and discuss it and come to a conclusion and ultimately vote on it. Um, Nobody in that process was there to try and ramrod anything or try and do an end around. And the suggestions to the contrary, um, I think really uh, are disheartening to me um, because they assume uh, a, a, an agenda and a, and a motivation that's anything but three people that were there to principally try and represent the town as best as they could. Um, I've heard other accusations that take uh, that even further to suggest that the money uh, that's associated with this settlement has been characterized as a bribe, which I take significant offense to, and I've mentioned that before. Um, I definitely have a concern that um, this agreement would... Um, it, Valerie referenced the phrase precedent, serve as precedent. I have that concern for two different reasons, though. I'm equally concerned for the reasons that she expressed that, uh, and, and others have that, um, you know, people could look at this and, and, and use it as an example or a blueprint um, uh, to, to file a lawsuit against the town and, and try and reach an agreement in, in the same manner. One thing that really concerns me too, though, that not a lot of people have talked about is what happens if the town loses. And so that's a thing that we spend a lot of time talking with our lawyers about, is what happens, uh, what are the potential outcomes when you're in litigation? This isn't some hypothetical, uh, you, know, what, you know, we're in an actual lawsuit, so that has actual outcomes. Uh, one is that the town could win, okay? Another is that the town could lose. And so as we were evaluating the, the settlement, that sort of presents itself as a, you know, do you take the sure thing, one in the hand, versus two or none in the bush? Um, so 
I just want everybody to be aware of that as being part of the consideration and that there, there, there was never at any time amongst uh, either, again, the participants to the, the mediation or, uh, or the settlement discussions or any of the rest of the counselors, um, sort of any rush to, to some preformed judgment. Um, so that all being said, um, I think that, uh, you know, the most paramount uh, responsibility uh, of town councilors is to uh, successfully and adequately uh, represent uh, the, the community. Um, I, I think that, I do think that the best outcome of this case is, is some sort of agreement that doesn't go to trial. I will say that. Um, I do think that, and, and I've even brought forward to um, the town manager and the chair as recently as today, and I've shared with the council previously, a case that one of our very own attorneys um, was central to in Scarborough that may serve as, you know, as a bellwether um, for us to try and reach a different alternative resolution on this. I, I, I do think it's of nobody's interest, the plaintiffs in this case or the town's to, to, to litigate this through to its conclusion. I am very hopeful that there is some uh, means of resolving this uh, that isn't through going down that process because I think it will be extremely lengthy. I think it will be extremely contentious and I think it will be extremely costly. Um, but I don't think that this agreement um, for the reasons that some of the other councillors have stated is the one that best represents uh, the interests of the town. And I won't be supporting it for that reason, but I'm very, very hopeful that we will be able to achieve some other kind of alternative resolution to this besides a fully litigated uh, court case. Thank you. Councillor Caitlin Jordan. Oh, I'm next. <laughs> Why not? Well, so many great things have been said already. A lot of people know I've been supportive of vacating this paper street for a long time. No problem. And I came into this meeting totally supportive of this agreement because it gave certainty. And that was, as a lawyer, something that you know, you look for. You don't want to go to trial and roll the dice. And so certainty gave a small win to everybody involved, is my thought process, because of what Jamie said, what if we go to the end and we lose? The principle of having access for everyone will have been lost. There will be no access for anybody if we lose. But then, after sitting through Monday's uh, workshop with the Harbor Committee, presentation, that really got me thinking again. And then when Penny brought up the principle of access for everyone, what if something happens and this is our only access? So do you risk that? At this point, I don't think we can. So while I thought this agreement would give certainty and give everything that we needed, I, I don't think this is the agreement that we should go with. But I do need to remind everyone the lawsuit still continues. And that's a huge concept that I think everybody needs to make sure they understand that, you know, we're not going to vote tonight and, and that's it, it goes away. The lawsuit still continues. The lawsuit that's been said that could take five years and hundreds of thousands of dollars still continues. And so I will even go as so far as to say that I think if we're going to continue the lawsuit and an agreement can't be made, then we need to continue the lawsuit so that it wraps up in the timeliest manner as possible. And those that are deeply involved in the lawsuit understand what I'm saying, because we have a lawsuit that could take years and years because there's so many parts to it. But so, we need to make sure that this lawsuit can move forward in as timely a manner 
so that the neighborhood can start to heal, so there can be an answer. Because that was the other thing I supported so much with this agreement was it gave certainty, an end, and we could start to see some progress healing. It might not have been, you know, it could have been ugly scar healing, but still it would be healing. So that's what I would like to see is we find a conclusion as quickly as we can that provides everything and we maintain our principles and hopefully we, we win and we get access for everyone. But it's a big risk and I want to make sure everybody understands that. Right now, it's a risk and that's what the town has asked the council to take. So from what I can tell, we're taking it. Thank you. Council Lennon. I guess I'm a lone voice here. <laughs> I, I am in favor of this settlement. Um, I think it's amusing and ironic that I'm sitting up here as the fiscal conservative for the first time in my nine years. I'm, I think I'm widely considered a spendthrift, but um, you know, Caitlin, it sounds really good to say that you hope we do this in a timely manner. We have no control over that anymore. If we turn down this settlement, we lose all control over how much money this is going to cost, how long it's going to go on, what the issues are going to be, who else might sue us um, in that neighborhood or another neighborhood. I am in favor of this settlement because we hired the three best lawyers in the state on municipal law, and they all said, this is a great settlement. It's the, probably the best settlement you'll get. And they were very clear that you, um, a settlement allows you to have some control. And if you don't accept that, you lose the control. That we, and the, and the judge who was the um, presiding <coughs> judge and the arbiter also strongly encouraged us because this is no, there is no guarantee we're going to win. And if we don't win, we have lost a lot. So not only did we spend an enormous amount of taxpayer dollars, which as the, um, this body up here is charged with allocating um, our citizens' tax dollars wisely and well. And I know that there's a passionate group that really cares a lot about this path, but there's a lot of people out there who have no opinion on it, and I don't think that their choice would be to spend probably well over a million dollars when you consider the 500,000 we're giving back, essentially. I'm just not sure that's where they would want to spend their money. We have many, many other priorities that people care about. We have aging school buildings and municipal buildings. Um, we have children to educate. We have many um, municipal services. And by the way, I think a lot of people would appreciate a reduced tax burden, which we've been hearing about, right, forever. So I don't feel comfortable um, gambling with money that is not mine, that is the taxpayers. And I think that it is quite possible that this is the best deal that will come before us, and we're turning it away, and we will look back with regret. Um, so be it. Nobody knows the future. We were told that this could drag on for years, which I don't think is helpful for the town or the neighborhood. Um, it could continue to be contentious, which I think has been exceedingly unfortunate for our community, not only within our community, but the way it's perceived by the outside world. Um, and I think there could be um, appeals, other lawsuits, and it's just not what I think of as Cape Elizabeth. And finally, I, I, I too like access. I also think it's ironic that I've been like the champion of, of open space and trying to buy as much as we can, and here I am saying we don't need this. But this neighborhood is very well served. It has the whole gravel path, and it has eight acres that Selt owns, which ha has beaches and cliffs and beautiful views. Most of that neighborhood has permanently preserved access. So um, it just doesn't strike me that an 800 foot path in a neighborhood with ample access to the ocean is worth the money that we're about to spend. And that's how I feel, but obviously I'm totally in the minority, so <laughs> my, my opinion and my vote doesn't count. But that is how I feel, and I, um, 
really appreciate the work our lawyers have done. I think they've done a spectacular job, and apparently we'll be working with them for many years to come. <laughs> Thank you. Before we continue, I'd just like to remind our audience to please, please not talk. <laughs> Thank you, because it's, distract it's distracting. <clears throat> Sorry, Councillor Caitlin Jordan. Just to kind of respond to Sarah's comments, I agree with just about everything you said. And I just wanted to, to touch, you, you know, you commented back to me, so it's a, the control was a big thing for me to get over. We would control the outcome. And I understand that, and that was a, a really big hurdle for me to come to, to get over. But then, just like the lawyers you said, who advise this is a great deal, it's a great deal. Well, I can advise a client, this is a great deal, it's a great deal, but at the end of the day, I gotta accept the fact that the client might not wanna take the deal. And so I feel like, to me, the, the clients are, the the 9,000 plus citizens in this town. And then really what got me was, and I just want to reiterate, is the access. And to point out, it's not just a, a small path. What's different about the access here is this access goes to the water. Like there's no little road, it's the, the whole gamut. So 50 years from now, should we win the lawsuit, which hopefully we'll have concluded within 50 years. Maybe, I'm just saying, just saying maybe. You just don't know what could happen to the landscape. And so after listening to the, the commercial lobstermen and you know all of the people who sat through and said about access and access, what if the state pulls our access? What if you, know, you, you need access to the water and the town needs to be able to access through there. What if the water levels rise and it's not such a sharp cliff? You just, you don't know. And so if it's a risk of a lawsuit, which is definitely going to draw out, and I think it can wrap up if we proceed things a little, a little quicker, then, then we can move forward. I just hope it's, that we win, if we're gonna win. Thank you. Councillor Christopher Strong. May as well. Uh, so I had about 10 minutes of things to say, but uh, it's obviously not needed. So um, brevity is going to be, yes. <laughs> I'm going to keep it very short. Um, um, thank you so much for Penny Jordan for setting the tone for the evening. Um, I agree with everything she said. Um, thank you so much to Valerie and uh, Jamie for what they said as well. I agree with everything you said. Um, I am so proud of Councillor Caitlin Jordan. I am so proud of you recognizing and, and, and saying that you're gonna reject this and recognizing the importance of access. And I think everyone in this room should recognize that she has been willing to look at this issue from an independent perspective and said, what is the best option here? And she's saying it's, it's to pursue this litigation. So uh, thank you, I just wanna thank you. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna tear up here. Uh, I'll just leave it at this. Be kind to each other. Be kind to each other. Everyone wants finality here. The issue is not your neighbors, the people that live in the neighborhood who have different opinions from you. The issue, the enemy is not your neighbors. The enemy is the situation. Be kind to each other. These are your friends. These are the people when. When, you're, when your child breaks their arm rollerblading down a street, these are the people that run out to help you. These are your neighbors, this is your community. Stop tearing it apart. Please, just be kind to each other. As you can see, we are going to represent the, the best interests of the town. We are gonna to stand up for what's the best interest of the town. Just trust us to do that. Trust us to keep this civil. Trust us to recognize that this, the enemy here is the situation, it is not the plaintiffs. Please, just be kind to each other. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak before I, I proceed? I, I echo Chris's last sentiment. Um, there's been an incredible amount of vitriol that has come from this issue that um, I've been so disheartened by as not just a counselor, but as a citizen. Um, even some of the things that have been said here tonight or at recent public hearings, um, 
comments like, you know, people that are, you know, some of the plaintiffs that are out of state residents or part time residents or came from away. I came from away. I've now lived here longer than I've lived anywhere else in my life, but at one point I was from away. Um, I think that the statements like that um, just do nothing but further, you know, divide us and tear us apart, um, and do nothing to to help be constructive in in trying to find compromise. Um, you know, folks that have been embroiled in this issue and remember. Um, you know, how I tried to, um, you know, guide this discussion last year as chair, uh, will remember that um, I've been very focused on trying to find compromise here. Um, and I've been, you know, perhaps too naive and too Pollyannish about whether or not that's possible. Um, and I'll continue to be, frankly, because I, I truly believe that, that, that there is some way that, that this can reach resolution. Um, but I know that that's not at all possible um, with the accusations that get made from one side to another, and it, it's it's both. It's I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm singling out the example from tonight. I'm in no way um, saying that nasty or negative things have not been said to to all people, regardless of their opinion on this issue. And I, I'd close that with saying, on this and many other issues in town, but this issue more than any other. I've made the remark to some people sometimes that I'm more than willing to entertain and even encourage what I consider a healthy degree of skepticism about people or their ideas or um, you know a, a decision that's before us. Um, I think that that's good. It's good to challenge things, but too many times in this debate and in some others in town, it rises to a level of what I consider to be an incredibly unhealthy and frankly unfair level of cynicism where people just assume the worst in, in, in everybody, assume that there's some agenda, assume that there's some ulterior motive um, for what they're looking to get. And it's so frustrating. It's so very, very frustrating. And like I said, none of that yields compromise, none of that yields consensus, and none of that yields good policy. And I really, really hope that as we move forward on this that um, I strongly appeal to people to, uh, you know, uh, keep those things in mind because that's the only way that, that you know, we'll, we'll get anywhere on this or anything else, quite frankly. Thank you. Can I just add one more thing? Sorry, more on a tangent sure. now, but yeah. I completely agree with what both of those said. And um, it's really easy to stereotype or simplify what the other or the enemy and it, 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 it generates energy and momentum to you know, make an enemy of someone else. But it's, I think it's been deeply and profoundly um, disappointing and unhelpful. And I would say that I think the characterizations of the abutters has been um, appalling. I, I, you know, that they're rich and they're just trying to buy their way and they want to throw us out and, you know, this is about class and it's the have and have not. <laughs> None of that is true at all. They, they simply did not want a public trail on a public map for um, visitors and tourists. We've seen that that can be very deleterious to a neighborhood to have free access to their backyard. They never wanted to throw out anyone who lived in the subdivision they, they were welcoming, and so I think that the stereotyping of just the mere they, as if they're all the same people, um, has been really, really unfair and um, really, to me, disheartening. Um, so I hope that that can stop and the neighborhood can start to mend because every, so many people have told us this used to be a friendly neighborhood, it used to be fun to be in, we all liked each other, it's been ruined, it's been horrible. One of the big reasons I wanted to support this is to put some kind of a hard stop to it so that the neighborhood can start being a neighborhood again where you have cookouts and you smile and you say hello to each other and you have each other's back and you look after your kids. So I, I'm disagreeing with these two and pleading that people can please, please, you know, assume best intent and, um, and, and don't vilify each other and try to 
mend some fences and work together because I think that part of it has been really, I think, personally painful for us, as you can see. Um, so just wanted to add that. All right, thank you. Well, unless there's anything else, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and finish up. Um, uh, along with Councillor Caitlin Jordan, I think that we've, we as councillors have been dealing with this in the longest, I think, since 2013. And, and yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you did have a hiatus. A break. <laughs> you, you had a hiatus. And it started way before my hiatus. I thought I'd been dealing with this for Okay, you've years. all been involved. We've all been involved. <laughs> okay. And of course, anyway, well, I will say then you, you and Councillor Kayla Jordan and I have been on <laughs> very opposite ends of the issue all along. Um, so here we are. I, I just liken this to uh, we're getting ready to cross the Rubicon. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those moments, um, and it's it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm sure you all know. I, you know, I I have uh, always wanted to accept Surfside Avenue. I was one of the counselors in mediation. And I worked hard with that process in good faith. Um, I do uh, oppose the settlement, and um, for several reasons. The greatest is principle, and uh, I do know that or let me just say it is true that we don't know what the costs of further litigation will be. That's quite true. And, you know, I've thought, well, would taxpayers want us to spend 100000 or more if that's what it took? That was one estimate by uh, one of our citizens. To uh, permanently protect what myself and many others consider a priceless asset, and hundreds of residents are telling us that yes, they do. They do. And for years, survey after survey after survey, whether it's future open space, whether it's the Harvest Committee, whether it's 2000 Comprehensive Plan or the new draft plan, our citizens affirm over and over again that the number one reason they live in Cape Elizabeth and they want to live in Cape Elizabeth and they love Cape Elizabeth is open space and access to it. So, you know, I, I don't believe this settlement adequately would protect the rights of the Shore Acres residents. Um, I think that, you know, there certainly is an attempt at that, but there could be other legal vehicles that abutters might use. And so I do believe that um, those rights would be in jeopardy, and that's another reason I don't, I, I don't support this settlement. The overwhelming cry that we've been hearing from hundreds of citizens all over town, not just Shore Acres, is to reject the settlement and ultimately to accept Surfside Avenue. And we've heard many comments for years, and certainly in the last uh, year or so since the lawsuit came to us from five abutters, <coughs> that, uh, that people want us to reject this. They want us to accept Surfside Avenue for a walking path for the future, for everyone. I believe that the town's position is very strong and I believe we will prevail. I also am very aware of people's concerns about healing the community and th that's a very serious concern and, you know, and most of us have mentioned that tonight. I think the best way to heal the community is for the town to lead and for the town to stand up for its principles and to lead on principle. I think that is the way to heal the community. Um, I would like to point to the success of Prout's Next Cliff Walk. There, there are places that are very successful, and that's one of them, and it's very close by. And I, I certainly see that as an absolute win-win, and, and I would predict that this is what this will, this will be in, in that respect. Friendly, uh, accommodating, and... Um, and still providing a lovely place for people to walk and enjoy nature. So, um, I, one last comment. You know, I, 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 I was looking through all my notes and um, I wrote this last year at one point, so I'm just gonna reiterate this statement. I do believe that public access is best preserved with local government control than by depending on the charity of private citizens. So again, I think the best way for the town to heal, for the neighborhood to heal, is for the town to lead by standing up to this lawsuit, rejecting the settlement, and establishing the strong principles of open space and access 
for the future, now and the future. So at this moment, I'd like to ask the town clerk to read the motions again, please. It was moved by Councilor Straw, seconded by uh, Councilor Penny Jordan to reject the settlement agreement. Okay. All those in favor? All those opposed? Yep. The, it, the, uh, the settlement is rejected by a vote of six to one. Moving on, item number 130, to consider sale of property in Ocean View Road, map U03, lot 92. I'll let the uh, audience clear out, and then we'll open the public comment for that item. opportunity for public comment excuse me on item number 130 this is a consideration of uh, purchasing uh, property on Ocean View Road would anyone like to speak to this item seeing no one uh, we'll uh, proceed on this again item number 130 uh, on Jan I just want to read one thing on January 8th of this year, 2018, the town council authorized the town manager to consider an offer from Mark Bryken and Sandra Elliott to purchase lot U3-92 off Ocean View Road for $35,000 and to refer, re, refer the request for purchase to the conservation committee for review. All of that changed and the price has changed and I will let the, uh, the manager speak to the rest of this. Thank you, Madam Chairman, I'd be happy to. <clears throat> Uh, after that point, the, uh, the matter was referred to the Conservation Committee who uh, came forward and brought, uh, brought a recommendation back to the Council. And to summarize it, they thought that the, the town should maintain the lot, uh, for, or at least for open, sorry, for future Greenbelt connectivity and neighborhood open space. However, if the neighborhood, uh, sorry, if the lot was sold, then they would recommend that at least the town maintain a 15 foot wide easement across the rear of the property, which would access potentially a, another larger parcel to the rear of it that may have future connectivity for other projected uh, trails throughout the state, uh, throughout the town, sorry. Uh, so they came back and uh, made that recommendation. And in March, the item came back to the council. The council reviewed the recommendation, uh, which also they had recommended that you need to have a higher number. Uh, the $35,000 value that was placed on it was considered to be too low. Uh, so the, the council authorized me to go back and speak with Mr. Gresham and Ms. Elliott uh, about the conditions as well as to see if their interest was still there and as well as if their interest was still there to bring a higher number. Uh, what the town had used to establish that number was other open space parcels that the town had purchased its, itself within the past few years. Uh, so after some conversations, Mr. and Mrs. Gresham came back with their, uh, with a different offer, which was $90,000 uh, for the parcel uh, for Rio 392. Uh, they also agreed to allowing an easement to go across the, the rear of the parcel, which would meet the recommendations of the Conservation Committee. So uh, the town does have a policy that is related to the disposal of property, and so that was that's that process was met every step of the way uh, to get to this point. Uh, that's why this evening uh, we brought this back to the council uh, with all the points that have been agreed to uh, in place and is ready for action if the council so chooses to uh, to sell the parcel. Great, thank you. Is there a motion on the table? to approve the sale of town-owned property on Ocean View Road, tax map U303, lot 92, to Mark, I did I mispronounce uh, it? Gresham, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Gresham, if you're here or listening. Ms. Uh, Mark Gresham and Sandra Elliott for the price of $90,000, and upon such other terms and conditions as the town manager shall approve, 
Further, the town manager is authorized to execute and deliver a release deed for such property together with such other documents as he deems necessary or appropriate. Council Lennon. So moved. so moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan. Any discussion? Madam Chair? Yes, I uh, just Stroud. out of curiosity, yeah. do we have um, an assessed value for the lot? And the only other thing was the document references in Exhibit A showing where the easement would go. Um, I'm fine not seeing the exhibit so long as it's represented that that meets what was the Conservation Commission's recommendation. If, if I may, Madam yes, Chairman. Please. Uh, yep. th thank you, Councilor Straw, for asking the question. Yes, uh, in the description in the Exhibit A, I believe it, it identifies the meets and bounds area that should be there. Uh, I, I met extensively with the town planner to follow up on what the Conservation Committee's desires were. We looked at that multiple times and, and wanted to make sure that you could at least have a 15 foot wide area across the back as well as one we could maintain if so needed to be, you know, needed to be mowed uh, and so on, you know, to, to maintain it when we do have a trail access point. And if you'd be so kind as to give me a moment, I can tell you uh, what the assessed value is if Mr. Yeah, Mr. Sweat isn't here anymore, so I thought he might give you to the punch on that. Uh, just will take me a moment. I'm just going to our uh, the, the most popular item on the town's <laughs> website, which is the assessor's <laughs> database. Assessor's database. <laughs> Consist consistently the top hit <laughs> that we have. Uh, currently, the value uh, on the land is assessed at eighteen thousand six hundred dollars. Okay, great. Oh, that's a pretty good amount. <laughs> okay. No more uh, questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other comments, Councilor Garvin? I, I, I was just asking <laughs> Councilor Randall, and I'm trying to remember from budget season when we made the allocation from the land acquisition fund yeah. for the land trust's um, purchase of Robinson's Woods 3. Um, I recall there being a lot of debate about how much we were going to contribute to that. And what I don't remember is the, is the final number we landed on, was that inclusive of this assumed? Yeah, I'll let you. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, of the ninety thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars of the of the sale proceeds are earmarked for for that land purchase. Right. Okay. And then the remainder would be allocated towards some of the legal costs we may have had to, to get to this point. Yeah, uh, that's what that's what I thought. So we we've, we've sort of already factored this in to that. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure everybody was clear. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And anything else? Just. Briefly. Councilor Randall. I apologize if you said this, Matt, but I was looking back at my notes from that March 12th meeting. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, the easement that's included, it is what the Conservation Committee had envisioned, and it will work with a plan to put a path there? Yes, uh, if, if you look at the green belt, there's, uh, it's a future path that, that has the linkage, but it does, it work. it lines up very well, because you had that, there is a paper street that, <laughs> 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 that runs right next to this property. <laughs> so uh, the town is still maintaining it and has extended its interest in that paper street, uh, but it also links up to the end. So that's where, that's why we kept the 15 foot wide uh, triangle uh, that's in there set okay. allow crossing. Thanks. It lines up perfectly, so. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Great, thank you. Uh, next item and our, our final item is number 131, to consider the approval of lease purchase uh, financing for the purchase of a ladder truck, a rescue uh, vehicle, and a plow slash dump truck. We now have the opportunity for public comment on this item. Would anyone like to address the town council on this item before we, before we begin? Seeing no one, we'll continue on. Uh, this was approved, uh, we approved the purchase of a ladder truck and rescue um, vehicle and a plow dump truck in our uh, 2019, FY, fiscal year 2019 budget. Um, and I know that uh, Matt has been working on financing options, so at this point I'll, I'll ask him to 
take over the explanation of this item and, and to uh, give us any information we might we might want. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, what, what we have here this evening is uh, the is to pro provide me as the manager to act on your behalf to sign into this agreement uh, with TD Bank to provide the financing. Uh, as you go back through your uh, through the mists of time to the to the budget season, uh, you re you'll remember the discussion on the purchase of the of the fire truck, which is called a Quint, because uh, it has five different functions, uh, which will replace our our aging out ladder truck, as well as one of our aging out ambulances and an aging out plow and dump truck. Uh, at the time when I was doing the forecasting of uh, financing, I had put in four percent was what the anticipated interest rate was uh, for that. Uh, there were some unsure uh, items taking place within the marketplace. Interest rates were being forecast to uh, rise, so I was concerned to make sure that we had at least a conservative number brought forward. Uh, that being said, uh, TD Bank has come forward with a 2.95% uh, interest rate, so uh, we're in decent shape when it comes to that in comparison to what I, ha I had forecast, so there is some savings. Uh, I've taken this uh, agreement to James Safian, who is our bond counsel, and had him review this extensively. Uh, we've gone back and forth with TD Bank uh, to make sure uh, that the language all lines up and is in agreement with what our bond counsel's uh, requirements are. And, uh, and he has blessed this. That's why you have a significantly large order uh, to, to, to approve of. So he has provided this. Uh, we also have the terms of the, uh, of the lease purchase agreement that has been provided as well. Uh, so we're looking to execute that uh, if, with council approval uh, in the near term to have, those, to have the funding available for when we do acquire those assets. Uh, there is some question, or, or I understand there may have been some question regarding uh, when you do exceed a million dollars uh, in, in relationship to the charter mm -hmm. when there is a purchase. However, the charter specifically states that it's to a single asset item. Uh, remember, we had that discussion as well about the fire truck when we were looking at close to 1.2 million, and then the chief sharpened, uh, or the chief went back and spoke with the provider, and they sharpened their pencil, and uh, he actually provided. Uh, they came back with a very substantially successful number. Uh, that being said, uh, we are in compliance with the charter. Bond Council has taken a look at this and made sure that we are, and has given it his blessing. Um, and the other item that I just thought it might be important for council to understand that uh, due to the recent changes within our trade programs in the United States, uh, the same asset that we have under contract for the fire truck has gone up $43,000 since we put it under contract. So um, we have done a, a lot of good work. The staff has done a lot of good work to get to this point. So uh, as far as looking out for the finances for the town, I think in this case, uh, the town has really uh, come through in this, uh, in this instance. So. I'm happy to answer any questions or uh, to help get this forward. Councilor Straw? Uh, just note, when I looked at it, I was like, how did the fire truck become 1.5 million? I missed the fact that it's multiple items. Uh, only question is the interest rate, it isn't clear. It sounds like it's fixed. It is. It awesome. is it, it's fixed at 2.95. And well the, done. And the, uh, thank you. And the other part about that is that uh, we are making the payments at the beginning of the term uh, versus the end of the term. So that also provided us a beneficial uh, result as far as the interest that the town would be paying. Uh, on the lease purchase agreement, and it is for a five-year term, and I believe we're looking at our first payments to be uh, uh, in the early part of October, and my, uh, my desire to push that to that point uh, with the bank was because of the fact that the first, as, as many folks know, painfully at times, uh, around the first or second of October, the first half tax bill payments come in, so the town has a, a, a fairly decent cash uh, on hand at that point. So instead of having to worry about, uh, we're in good shape financially anyways, but I'd much rather make sure that we had the security of doing that. So that's why I negotiated to have that way as well. And I would just like to ask just for uh, clarity for the counselors and, and our, our citizens, just, just to further explain why we are in compliance with our town charter on spending uh, a million or more a year. We have three separate items. It's lease, finance, purchasing, and we're spending way less per year over a five-year period. And so if you just kind of confirm that that was um, yes, that, reviewed. Yep, that was reviewed extensively uh, with, with Mr. Safian. Um, what we were looking at, uh, in just a moment, I'm sorry. Uh, just want to grab our, what our capital costs were for each item forecast for this year. Um. <coughs> so 
So yeah, none of the three items themselves had uh, were in excess of a million dollars. The fire truck was listed at nine hundred ninety. Uh, And, and the yearly expenditures are. Oh, and the yearly, yeah, and the, and the yearly expenditures are roughly, uh, roughly around three hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars annually for the debt service would okay. get us get us to that point. Oh, less less than that, but I'm just rounding right. at this point. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or concerns? Um, uh, is there a motion? And I'll, I'll go ahead and read it because the town clerk told me what what we need to read. So I'll go ahead and read it, and then someone could so move. Uh, recommended motion ordered that Cape Elizabeth Town Council approves and authorizes a lease purchase agreement with TD Equipment Finance as follows. Town of Cape Elizabeth, Maine, vote authorizing lease purchase, agree, lease purchase agreement with TD Equipment Finance Incorporated. Is, would anyone so move? So moved. Councilor Penny Jordan, is there a second? Second. Councilor Randall, is there any uh, more discussion? I'd just like to thank Matt again for his hard work on this. Um, so anyhow, okay, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Great. And is there uh, anyone in the room who would like to address the town council on a topic that was not on tonight's agenda? Please come forward, give us your name, your address, and you have three minutes. My name is Tom Egan. I live at 41 Hannaford Cove Road, a property that I've owned from, I think, think since uh, September of two, uh, 1980. And I've also owned a property across the street, Apple Tree Cottage LLC, which until just a year ago was a litigant against the town of Cape Elizabeth <clears throat> over a building permit issue that we took to the law court and we won. And then I exercised my discretion not to continue that litigation because it just wasn't the right thing to do. So tonight I heard you all talk about how the principle of access to the ocean is paramount. And I just got in the car <laughs> to come down here to mention to you that the principle of private property is also paramount. And on Hannaford Cove Road, which is a dead end street that abuts the ocean, there is a private way called Cutter Lane. There is also a private way called uh, Sunsi Sunrise Drive and Captain Elliott Road, which meet with Brook Road and go down to the ocean. And a few years ago, the town planner proposed a connection of the green belt across my property, across my neighbor's property, and then down the private way to Lighthouse Point Road. I then bought the private road to prevent the green belt from coming across my property and the private road. And I did that for one reason to maintain the cul-de-sac neighborhood of Hannaford Cove, which is just a terrific neighborhood, where we share things like we did last weekend, a cider press and apple pick on the orchards that uh, Apple Tree Cottage maintains, 11 acres. So I just wanted to come down and express my concern to you that when you collectively mention that access to the ocean is paramount, private property is also paramount. Connor Lane is private owned property. It abuts the, uh, the shoreline. And if you proceed along this critical path that I perceive you seem to be following, at least with respect to the, to the, uh, the roads, the, the paper streets, that you might come down in our neighborhood and blow us out with P-51 
people like, you know, people from away, people from the, uh, the lobster shack coming down to our beach. Mr. Egan, your time is up. So I will do everything in my power to preserve the private rights to that beach. And finally, I want to say I love living in this town because so many of you spoke so eloquently tonight. I said to myself, God, we've got a really talented group of people. So although we may not feel the same about various issues, I respect you all greatly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I make a comment on this comment? Yes. Is that allowed in the world? Briefly, please. I want to thank you, because I do think that there's this constant tension <laughs> that is, is always a tension, which is natural and appropriate between the rights of private properties and access for the public. And I would, since I'm rolling off the council and I won't have a voice anymore, um, I, I hope that the council going forward will be attentive to this tension. And though I love the Greenbelt Trail and I'm a huge fan of it, now that the major Greenbelt Trail is in place and the, the, it's now spokes into neighborhoods, which is the stated um, goal of the new Greenbelt Trail plan, Pay, beware and pay attention because this, all these struggles that we're talking about and issues stem from that. So let's not be too overly exuberant with the Greenbelt Trail cutting through too many people's private properties in neighborhoods that really would be much happier without a Greenbelt Trail. It's always a balance. And so I'm just asking you guys to be attentive to that tension. And this was a beautiful example. Thank you. And I think we're ready to adjourn. Would someone like to move? I move we adjourn. <laughs> I second that. Thank you. All those in favor? We are adjourned.